Hi, Paul from Heritage. Uh, this is an example of a job that we quoted quite a while ago, a few years ago now. And um, at the time the guy said that was too expensive and he can't afford it and he had a budget for 10,000 quid or something like that. So we're just gonna show you now what the guy he paid to do the job uh, has, what his installation looks like basically, and problems that he's had since then by going with this other fella. If you can hear upstairs, there's a lot of people walking around. The restaurant is on the top floor, it's a three-story building. So we've got a huge cellar. This mid-floor, which is just, as you can see, a building site. It's not really been used for anything since then. And the top floor has been converted into a restaurant. Uh, so a power supply has been put in upstairs and it's had full re fully rewired, fire alarms, emergency lighting and everything like that. So this is the supply that the guys put in from the ground floor, you know, it's alright, it's all right, you know, but it's not, it's not the neatest job. This is all their stuff here, that's just the right, the right mess. You see where the cables come out of the board, that's where the board is in the kitchen at the minute above. So that is the job that they've done, so it's just very, Everything's just very untidy, very messy. There's been two electrical fires here since this guy's been and done some work. So the first electrical fire that we've had, this is the old distribution board that he fitted originally with the job. So some of these stuffing glands didn't have any cables in um, and bits of metal and things something fell through and hit across multiple sections of the buzz bar and blew uh blew a hole in the side of the board um so and this board was also filled with a mixture of protec which is the actual manufacturer of the board and it was filled with other breakers as well that weren't the manufacturer's breakers so they don't fit in properly everything was loose all the breakers all the terminals were loose they, they all sit off at different length uh, different heights and stuff the old breakers so they don't sit in when you put the cover on properly and you've got to force the cover on and at the bottom as well the armored cable wasn't glanded in correctly it just came in the earth sheathing wasn't um the steel wire sorry wasn't earthed um, and everything generally was just a bit loose and a bad job so as there was holes that blew up blew a phase on in the um, in the building and then left them out without power that night when he was serving at the restaurant so that created again saving a few quid with a guy that's not registered qualified to do the job fitted gear that was not very good um, get problems like this lost himself a lot of money damaged the reputation And then there was another electrical fire. You edit that out. <laughs> so this is a main incoming supply for the entire building. So this three phase supply is split between three floors. So when I priced to do this, I was gonna um, split this up down here a bit better rather than just putting it into you know chop uh, Henley blocks or tail blocks or whatever you whatever you want to call them um, so then when they do open this this floor or the next floor above there's an actual supply for them to go into but in this case he's just put the supply straight into there and if anyone then he, wa he wants to rent this building out to somebody else on the mid floor <coughs> he's gonna have to sort this out and split the supply up so there was a another electrical fire down here so as you can see this is a new a new cutout that's been fitted i got called out again and there was like uh, some like there was complaints of ovens not working lights were some parts of the building they were on some parts they weren't lights were strobing things like that and here's the old cutout 
So as you can see there, this completely melted and split the unit away and this caught on fire. That's the connections there. Yeah, so this, this whole thing down here had caught fire. So I called the uh, DNO out and they came, re uh, repaired that, put a, new, put a new unit on. And then I went upstairs and then checked everything was still, uh, everything was back on in the main board. So as this building has got the restaurant on the top floor, uh, if a fire starts on this floor or the next floor below, that's obviously a problem for, for upstairs. So when the fire alarm was installed or spec'd by the building inspector, it required fire alarm, a fire system on this floor and detection on the cellar on the ground floor as well. So the only thing that's been installed in here is that smoke head, which is hanging off the ceiling. It's just that cable dangling down there. That's, that's the cable for that. That is the only fire detection on this floor and the next floor down. And this system hasn't been commissioned as well. So if there is a fire, which has happened on the ground floor, luckily it didn't escalate to anything else. If that fire had burnt this floor out and burnt that timber floor out there before people managed to get out of the building, there would have been no insurance covered for, for any of this. Everyone would have been in, if there was any injuries, fatalities, whatever, there'd be no insurance cover for on this building, on anybody who's in the building as well, as the fire detection, fire detection, fire alarm system hasn't been commissioned. It hasn't been installed by somebody who's qualified to do it or commissioned by somebody who is at least qualified to do it. So the difference with the job I quoted for is I spoke to the building inspector and asked them exactly what they wanted. So I priced exactly what the building inspector said that they need. Again, that came in too expensive for the customer. So went with somebody else. Um, and this is the kind of the, the standard of work that you get. And in the end, it worked out being more expensive than what I actually quoted. If it had just gone in the first place of what I said, it would have been right. It would have been good equipment used and everything would have been signed off properly. Uh, emergency lighting, fire alarms and the electric electrical installation as well would have all been signed off properly. I priced this job probably for two to three guys for a month to do the job start to finish, including all, say, good, good equipment. So I priced that as a job, materials and labour. The other guy that he chose to use gave him a day rate of 150 quid, something like that, 180 quid per day. And he says, you pay for the materials. And in the end, the job might have, instead of taking four weeks, which I planned, it might have took him and another person eight weeks. So their labour charges added up well more than what ours was going to be. And the materials ended up, again, spiralling out of control as he didn't know what they were planning for. And they've had to add and add and add and add and change equipment. So going for the cheapest quote or going for someone who's just going to work for day rate and you know let you do a bit of work to save a bit of cost and that is not is not the way forward it's not the way to do it it's just gonna it just creates a dangerous situation since he's installed this job i've been back here repairing and replacing problems that this guy's left which cost more than what the original what i quoted originally so it's a total false economy when we quote for work we quote for the best quality materials we can get and a realistic uh, time scale for getting the job done to a good standard to the correct standard uh, if you want any more information please check out our website